the most high be praised. We are so grateful to be able to share in this class once again. Um, I want to say welcome to School of Messiah Bible Institute. For you that are joining us for the first time, we welcome you and we thank you for your attendance and your participation. Today is our fifth class in Hebrew 1. And uh, for those who are joining with us for the first time, we want to um, bring you up to speed just a little um, so that you can uh, catch up. So before we actually get into all that we're going to cover in this class, we're going to review some of the things that we've already covered in our previous classes. But before we do that, let us begin with a word of prayer. Father, we do bless you. We thank you for your mercies, your kindness, and your goodness to us. We thank you for another opportunity to be able to provide the teaching here today in the subject of Hebrew. I ask that you would open the hearts and the minds the understanding of the Talmudim, your disciples, give revelation and insight as we learn the language, and then help us to know how to apply things that we learn into our scripture studies that we may be able to understand your ways and your purposes. We bless you most high in the mighty name of Yahshua, our King. Well, the Almighty be praised today. Hallelujah. Um, <clears throat> want to do a quick review for a couple minutes before we get into our study for today. And some of the things that I want to go over has to do with the components of Hebrew as we have <clears throat> been doing each time we present each class, we talk about the fact that Hebrew is a concrete language. It's not abstract in that it is based upon the five senses. What we mean by that, the, uh, the pictograph letters present us information of images. And when we see the images, we look at the function of that pictograph and when we look at the function of the pictograph we're able to do to derive the, uh, the meaning of each letter uh, for example we dealt with uh, the first letter in the Hebrew alphabet which is called the L because we're looking at um, the Paleo-Hebrew first, and then we have been looking at the modern Hebrew script. Our purpose for looking at the Paleo-Hebrew script is because the Paleo-Hebrew script provides us with a more accurate pictograph that we're able to tell what the image is, like uh, the L, or Aleph, as it is called. It's an image of the ox head. So when we see the ox head, it represents the ox. The function of the ox is to plow up the ground. So the things that we derive from the ox is that it is strong. Also the idea of yoking. The ox ties itself to another ox to be able to teach it and to provide work. So we see a number of things in the image and we derive the meaning. So the L primarily represents, or the Aleph primarily represents strength, might, power. So when we take that letter, 
the L, the oxid, it refers to something strong. Now, when we actually create um, a word, because we're going to look at words today, we're going to uh, show you some words, just a few. Uh, but, you know, as we go through, there's going to be a lot of words that we're going to see as we put the letters together. And we get the definition from those, um, those words by looking at the function of each letter. And then we also want to understand that um, Hebrew is written from right to left. So the orientation of Hebrew, it's not from left to right, which is what is customary among the Western cultures, such as English, Greek, and Latin. <clears throat> The Western cultures write from left to right. Hebrew, you write from right to left. You read from right to left. So that's important to be mindful of just as well. A um, number, uh, number of things in which we covered has to do also with uh, the fact that the uh, Greek and Roman languages, the Western languages, are derived from the ancient Paleo-Hebrew. And we showed how that when you look at the Hebrew letters and you reorient those letters, either you flip them, <clears throat> invert them sideways, or you flip them upside down, you'll obtain the Greek letter. Like we mentioned about the, the Aleph, I'm gonna show that. This is the Aleph, the L, this is the Aleph, that, this is the uh, uh, modern Hebrew script. But what we're looking at is the Paleo-Hebrew script. So the ancient Paleo-Hebrew script is an oxid. If we invert that a different way, we get the A. We also get the Alpha in Greek. So the Western languages are derived from the Hebrew. So that's important for us to know. Just want to give an example uh, for that. Um, another thing we want to look at is the fact that in the um, the Hebrew language, that the issue is about function. That's very very important in Hebrew. The issue is about function. Uh, the Hebrew language is more concerned about function than it is appearance. Whereas that's the opposite. When we look at the Greek or Western languages, the issue has to do with appearance. Whereas with Hebrew, it's more about function. <clears throat> so those are some, some important things to be mindful of as it has to do with the language. We need to be mindful of the fact that the language, as with any other language, it is associated with the culture, um, the meaning of things, the meaning of the pictographs is all associated with the culture. So in order to obtain a proper meaning of a Hebrew word, it is important to know how that word is associated with the culture. So like when you're going from one language to another language, in one language you may have a word that is similar to another word in Hebrew, but they are not identical in every case. And that is because in many instances, one culture may have a different, slightly different definition because it is related to its culture. And so it's important that when we look at words, especially when we're dealing with Greek and Hebrew, and the reason why I bring up the uh, comparison of Greek and Hebrew is because when, when we deal with the Bible, we have the Hebrew scriptures, which are written in the Hebrew language. Then we have the writings of the apostles. 
which uh, for us who live in the Western world, those writings have been left to us in the Greek language. So we're dealing with two languages that present scripture to us. We have to always keep in mind that the Greek scriptures preserve Hebraic thinking. The Greek scriptures preserve Hebraic thinking. And the way that we will ensure that we obtain the accurate meaning, the proper meaning of words, say if we're reading in the writings of the apostles, commonly called the New Testament writings. When we look at a word in Greek, we need to find its equivalent Hebrew word. Because if you look up a Greek word and you obtain the definition from the Greek language, that word is going to be associated with the Greek culture. So it's very important in order to obtain the proper meaning and definition of a word in the scriptures. You have to immediately find the equivalent Hebrew word and then obtain the definition. All right? It's very important that we do that. Now, I want to introduce... Um, I want to introduce a word to us today um, because we're going to be looking at some words and we're also going to be looking at the definite article and the conjunction. But first, we want to look at some words so that we can um, be able to see how all of this stuff is put together. Now, here's a word right here. We have the... Aleph and the bait. The Aleph and the bait. We get the word Ab from this here. Ab. Ab is translated father in English. The Aleph, which is the oxide, it represents strength, power, might. The bait, this here, it represents the house. It is a floor plan of a tent. It represents a house. The meaning we derive when we look at the function of each one of these letters or pictographs, we have strength and house. So the idea of this word that represents a person it represents the strength of the house. So the father, that's the English word used, is the strength or the strong one of the house. So in Hebrew, this is the meaning. The father is not just one who is a progenitor of children, but from the Hebrew perspective, the father is the one who is the strength or the strong one of the house. So this indicates one who is the protector, one who is the overseer, one who is the keeper of the house, the strong one of or over the house. That's what this word means in Hebrew. That has been translated father. The Aleph and the Beit. The Aleph and the Beit. First two words in the Hebrew alphabet we have there. The Aleph and the Beit. Okay? Av, father. So, just in looking at that word, we're able to see how we get the meaning of these words in Hebrew, okay? Now, let's look at another word. Here we have another word. We have the Aleph and the Mim. The Aleph and the Mim, okay? 
So, the Aleph and the Mem. This word is translated as mother. So we have the Aleph, <clears throat> which means strong one. And the Mem represents waters. Waters. Uh, the Mem, in that it represents waters, it also represents strength. It represents um, blood. It, it represents um, that which flows. There's a number of things that we get from this. But when you put these two together, it represents the mother. All right? And so the Aleph and the Mem, we say Am, represents the mother. It has to do with the idea of the strong one that produces life. The mother. All right? Here we have another word. We have the bait and the nun. The bait and the nun. Here, this word is pronounced ba -un, ben. So the ben which is the bait and the nun, the bait represents the house or the tent. And the nun represents the seed. Okay? Now, the, uh, the image that I have for the nun here is a, what, what is called the late uh, Hebrew script. This is not the early Hebrew, it's the late Hebrew script. The early Hebrew script actually looks like a, uh, a seedling. Uh, and I do have an image of that. Matter of fact, let me uh, show the image of that for the nun. Just give me a moment so you can see that. Because the idea of the nun is that it is a seed. And the seed represents children. That's what it represents. It represents children. So here's the image, the early Paleo-Hebrew image of the nun. It's a seed. It looks like a seedling, like a seed that sprouts, as though it's getting ready to um, take root and develop. It's a seedling. So the idea here is the seed that proceeds out of the house or the seed that comes out of the house is the children or the son. Now in this instance with the word Ben, we get the word translated son. Because in this instance, the, um, the son is the one who proceeds out of the house. Now, the reason why we get that idea of the seed coming out of the house, we need to remember that the house is representative of the place of origin. It is the place where everything comes from. It represents or indicates a number of things. It indicates where Elohim dwells. It indicates the place where creation is generated from. So in the house, um, where the mother and father come together and copulate to produce the children. That all happens in the tent. The tent is the place where the sexual union takes place. So all of these ideas that are related to the tent um, have to do with being in connection with these ideas. So when you have the tent and the seed, it means that the seed is coming out from the tent, so it represents children. That's the idea. So in this instance, when we have the bait and the nun, we have 
a word which represents son. Now, here we have another word. This is the bait and the top. Now, mind you, all of these letters that we're presenting here are in the Paleo script. Normally, you would see this in the modern Hebrew script, but what I'm doing, I'm trying to get us accustomed to seeing the Paleo Hebrew so that when we see the letters, we're able to recognize those letters and then we're able to translate the word because when we see the picture, we're able to get an idea of what the meaning is. So we know right here we have the house, the tent, and we have the tab. The tab represents two sticks that are crossed. Now this here represents the daughter, the daughter, okay? That's what it represents. It represents the daughter. Uh, in the previous word, it represented a son. And so in this instance, we have the Tav coming out from the house. So with the Tav coming out from the house, it's just rep representing a feminine aspect of a child. That's, that's, that's the idea behind this here when we look at the letters. So anytime you see a letter following the house, it's something that is related to something that is produced from the house. Okay? That's important for us to be mindful of. But this is the word in Hebrew for dar, and we would pronounce it as bat. Bat. The bait and the top. We would call it the bat. Now, here's another letter, uh, another word rather. We have the het, which is a tent wall, and we have the nun again. I should have blown this up, so let me get let me get the nun. This is what the nun looks like right here. That's this letter. This is a larger version of it, and uh, the het and the nun. Give us a word in Hebrew called chain. Chain. Now this word, chain, has been translated in English as grace. That's a very familiar word among many believers, grace. Um, but the understanding that we get in Hebrew from this word is not identical to the one in Hebrew, um, in Greek rather. Now I mentioned a little earlier, I talked about how that when we're looking at Greek words or any word in any language in comparison to another language, that you have to make sure that you understand the word based upon the culture. Okay? Now, in the Greek language, the word grace is translated from a word called charis. That's the Greek word that's translated grace. And that word means um, something that is freely given. And it's been translated favor that is unmerited. Now, in Hebrew, this word chain does not mean unmerited favor. And I know that might be of a surprise to many because the idea from the Greek definition does not carry over to the meaning in Hebrew, even though the word chain and the word charis have been somewhat associated with each other. But what we need to know when we look at the Hebrew meaning of this word chain that has been translated as grace in English, the word chain gives the idea of the seed, which is the nun, the seed being brought into the tent. Now, what my ask, how does the chet 
How does the head cause this word to have an understanding of the seed being brought into the tent or the seed being brought into the house? Well, what we have to understand is that when we look at the, the head, the head is a tent wall. A tent wall is a part of the tent. Because it's a part of the tent, that means that this word is related to the tent or related to the house by virtue of the het being a part of the tent. This is important uh, to understand, especially when we're dealing with these Hebrew words so that we can catch the meaning. Because as I said, the meanings are derived by understanding the relationship of the pictographs. Because all of it has to do with, with the things that are concrete. So the tent wall means division in and of itself. The head, that pictograph, this here, that means division. It means separation. It has to do with the idea of separating something from one side and another side. So the het being associated with the nun, the seed, has the idea that the seed is being taken from outside of the house and being brought inside of the house. The idea that's conveyed here is that the seed, which represents the children, are brought into the house, which is the place of safety security, and salvation from the elements and anything that can happen to the seed or to the child out on the outside of the house. So the idea that's, that's uh, presented here is an act of deliverance. It has the idea that a person has been brought into the house being brought into the place of safety, being brought into the place of protection, being brought into the place of support, being brought into the place of security. So the idea of favor that comes with this word hain, like for example, the uh, scripture text where it says that Noah found grace in the sight of Elohim, the word chen is the one that's used. It doesn't mean unmerited favor as the Greek definition is. But what it does have to do, it, 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 it imports this idea of Elohim putting someone in a secure disposition, a safe disposition a favorable disposition. It is a work of Elohim transferring the children or the child, the seed, from being outside of the house to now being inside of the house. So that's the idea that's presented by this word, Hain. So, yeah, we get the word favor from this word, but it does not mean unmerited favor in the sense of how it's understood in the Greek language. Because in the Greek language, the idea has to do with a gift given to you, something given to you that you didn't work for. Whereas in Hebrew, this word, chain, more uh, uh, accurately refers to something that is done for you to put you in a favorable and secure disposition. Um, the term deliverance would be probably more appropriate. And, and let me add this with respect to this particular word uh, when we understand it Hebraically. And I love the way that the Apostle Paul um, said this in the scriptures, and I believe it's in Titus where he said it, where he said that the grace of Elohim has appeared to 
No, he says the grace of Elohim that brings salvation. That's what it is. I don't have the text right in front of me, but what he said was that the grace of Elohim that brings salvation. That is the more appropriate uh, function of this word. Because it brings someone from the dangers of being on the outside of the house to bringing them into the protection of the father that's in the house. That's the idea. So like when Paul says, for the grace of Elohim that brings salvation has appeared to all men. He's referring to this Hebrew idea of grace, not a Greek idea of grace. Okay? So that's important. This is the word. The chet, which is a tent wall, and the nun, which is the seed. I hope everybody's learning something here as we're going through these words. Um, you know, this uh very important for us to, um, to catch these concepts. Um, Another word here that I want to, a couple of them actually, a couple more words that I want to look at, and then I want to uh, look at the definite article. Here is another word that we have. This one right here, we have the bait. We have the resh, which is the head of a man. We have the wav, which is a tent peg. And we have the cough which is the cupped palm of a hand. This spells the word Baruch. Baruch. The word Baruch, it's translated blessing. But the idea we get from this word Baruch, there again, we start with the house. So anytime we see the house, we're, we're, we're looking at the place of origin, the place of creation. We're, we're looking at the place of security. That, that's the place where everything goes out from. The race is the head of a man. So we have the head of a man coming out of the house. The head of the man here represents the strong man of the house. So the strong man of the house comes out from the house. Then we have the tent peg. The tent peg represents support. It represents security. Because the tent peg, it is what supports the tent. It's the supporting part of the tent. And it's also connected with the house. So we have... The strong man that comes out of the house to bring support with his cupped hand. All right? So the idea is of this word Baruch, it is the support received from the strong one of the house. It has to do with receiving the support of Elohim. Or whoever the strong man of the house is. Uh, you know, we, we use the term, um, let, let me give an example. You know, when a, when a son goes to a father and the son is getting ready to leave home. And the son may ask the father, I want your blessing before I make this decision. The idea of saying, I want your blessing, is saying, I want your support. So the one who is the master of the house, the strong one of the house, who is supporting, that's the idea of this word Baruch. Even though it's translated bless or to bless, it has to do with the idea of granting support to someone or to something. 
So that's where we get the idea of blessing from this word Baruch. It means to receive the support from the strong one of the house. Okay? The Beit, the Resh, the Wav, and the Kaf. Okay? All of those letters, which are pictographs, they have a meaning, which relate to their function. And it describes supporting. That's what it describes. Giving support to someone. Okay? So that's important. Now, let's look at uh, the definite article. Now, in Hebrew, there is a definite article. When we talk about the definite article, we're talking about the word the in English. Like if um, I want to speak in particular to a thing or with reference to a thing, I will say the house. If I'm referring to a house, I'll say the house. If I'm referring to a chair, I'll say the chair. The definite article is the. If I say uh, the key, I'll say, if I'm going to refer to a key, I'll say the key. Um, if I'm going to say uh, something with reference to a particular man, I will say the man. Uh, with reference to a woman, I will say the woman. So the way in which that's expressed in the Hebrew language is by taking the letter hey. I want to show you what the hey looks like. This is the hey. This is the Paleo-Hebrew script of the hey. This is the modern Hebrew script of the hey. So what we do, we take the hey and we put it in front of a word. When you put the hey in front of a word, that's the indication that that word is going to be seen now with a definite article. So let me give you an example of that. Bear with me for a moment, just kind of getting all of my information here straight. Okay, here they are. Here they are. Okay. Now, here we have the hay in front of the aleph and the bait. Now, we already talked about the aleph and the bait, that that word is av, or ab, which is where we get our word father from, all right? When we put the hay in front of the word, it now becomes the father. So anytime you see the hay in front of a Hebrew word, we now have a definite article. So this that we have here, which is ha-av, that's how we would say it. We would say ha, the hay in front of it, you just say ha. You don't say hav. No, you say ha, you, you pronounce the hey, ha, and then you pronounce the word av. So the hey is not used as part of the word when you're pronouncing it. You just pronounce the hey as though it is separate, because it is. You'll say ha, av. Okay? Ha, av means the father. Okay? Another example, we already talked about the Aleph and the Mem right here. Aleph and the Mem, which gives us the word, which is translated mother. It is Am, but we have the He in front of the Aleph and the Mem. So we will say Ha Am, okay? That's what we will say, and that means the mother. Another example. Another example we have here is with the ha in front of the bait and the nun. Okay? In this instance, we have ha ben, which means the son. Okay? The sun.
And here we have the hay in front of the bait and the tav. Bait and the tav represents the daughter, bat. We have ha bat. Ha bat, which means the daughter. Okay? Now, we want to talk about conjunction. Conjunctions. Uh, in Hebrew, the way a conjunction is expressed is by taking the wav. We take the wav and we put the wav in front of a word. I want you to see the wav. Wav is a tent pig. This is what the wav looks like right here. This is the Paleo Hebrew. This is the modern Hebrew script. The wav is what's used to be put in front of a word and it gives us a conjunction. For example, um, when you read in the Bible, say take the first verse. It says, in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Okay? The word and is a conjunction. So the way that that would be expressed in Hebrew, you would take the wav and you would put the wav in front of the word the earth. Like in that phrase, heavens and the earth. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Now, we got a couple different things going on just in that one verse that I just quoted, all right? Because we see the definite article in the heavens, and then we have and the earth. Now, the Hebrew word for earth, it's aretz. So we have a definite article in front of aretz, which gives us the earth. But then we also have the wav. Now, I, I didn't write down um, the word we or ve ha aretz. I didn't write that down. But I do want to give us an idea of how that is expressed. Okay, so if we have ha aretz, and I already mentioned about the definite article, you say the he, you pronounce the he, and then you say the word aretz, is the word for earth in Hebrew. You say ha aretz, you put the he in front of it, and then you say aretz. So that would be ha aretz, that's earth. But then when you say and the earth, you put the wav in front of the he. And you would say va ha aretz. Va ha aretz. That's how you would say it. Va, which represents the and, ha the aretz earth. Okay? That's how you would say it. So anytime you want to express in Hebrew a conjunction, the word and, which is how we would uh, see it in English, you would use the wav. Now I do have a word here, well actually it's a couple words that I have here that I want to show right here. Here I have the aleph and the bait, which gives us the word ab, which means father. And then next to it, I have the wav, aleph, and the mem. Aleph and the mem gives us the am, which represents mother. The wav in front of the am gives us and mother. So basically what we're trying to express here is father and mother. When you put the wav in front of a word, you have the conjunction expressed. So here in this phrase, we have father and mother. It would be av, va, am. Av, va, am. Or av, va, am. Some will express the vav or the wav with the va. Others may express the wav as a wa. 
This depends on what Israelite community you may be a part of. Um, for those who are familiar with primarily the modern Hebrew script, which is what's used commonly within rabbinic Judaism, you're going to see the Wav pronounced as the Va. Okay? But um, that's not the only way in which the Wav is expressed. There are other Israelite communities that express it as the wa. That's how it can be expressed. But the point that we're trying to convey here is to note how the conjunction is seen. So anytime you put the wa in front of a word, it expresses the conjunction, right? And we're going to close on that note. So let us pray. Father, we do bless your name again for your kindness and for the opportunity to be able to share and to teach this wonderful language of Hebrew. I trust that each one that has attended has been enlightened and edified in the teaching. I trust that the things that we have shared today will help them to be able to develop a greater understanding in their studies of the scriptures. And Father, we will bless you for everything that is done, for all that has been discussed, and most of all, that your disciples are learning and are being educated in the way of the Creator. We bless you in Yahshua's great name. Well, I trust that each one of you have been enlightened in this teaching today, and that as you go in your studies, as you are reading scripture and you are looking at the Hebrew language, you'll be able to make sense of what you're reading in Hebrew. Also, um, you'll be able to check because there are some times where in the process of translating that uh, some words are left out. Uh, sometimes a definite article may be in front of a word and that definite article is not expressed always in a translation. And that could be a big deal. So it's important that we know these things so that when we study scripture, we'll be able to discover the more accurate meaning of the message Elohim is trying to give to us. Bless his great name. For those of you who have watched us for the first time, I trust that this has been a blessing and an encouragement to you. And we ask you to definitely uh, attend again. We would love your participation. And hopefully... It will inspire you to enroll in the course. You can enroll in School of Messiah Bible Institute by going to our website at www.ncmmi.20m.com. You can click on the uh, NCMMI link, which is called School of Messiah Bible Institute. And once you get to that link, you can download the enrollment form, and enroll in School of Messiah and in this course. We'd love to have you to begin the journey of learning and being educated and trained in the things of Elohim to be prepared to serve Elohim in his vineyard through School of Messiah Bible Institute. Hallelujah. Well, we trust that this has been a blessing to you, and we definitely would ask that you share a donation of any amount to assist us in this great work that we're doing to bring the message of Elohim to the nations. You can go to that website that we just presented, www.ncmmi.20m.com, and you can share a donation of any amount. Click on our uh, donate button there or by Cash App, which is our preferred method of receiving donations. Our Cash App code is dollar sign. N C M M I. We thank each and every one of you for your participation. 
and for stopping by. For those who are watching us for the first time, we thank you for stopping by. And please, please attend again. The Most High be praised. Well, we thank each and every one of you, and we say to you, Shalom.